<clears throat> well, this is gluconeogenesis. Um, this is a short course for gluconeogenesis, and this is the definition. What is gluconeogenesis? First of all, gluconeogenesis is the formation of new glucose from substrates, like I have written here, amino acids. Well, are there any other substrates for gluconeogenesis? Actually, yes, they are. They are like uh, uh, some of the fatty acids which can make the amino acids and also like alcohol which makes lactate so from lactate also we can make uh, glucose this is a very simple definition of the gluconeogenesis now next point is why our body makes glucose what is the purpose why our body needs glucose there are certain tissues in the body which only require glucose they cannot survive on any other sort of uh, substrate so they survive only like as you can see here RBCs and also the brain they cannot rely on any other fuel except only the glucose so <coughs> what happens is when we have eaten our dinner or food and our glucose level has gone down very much so uh, there should be some source from where this uh, brain and the RBC can get their food so that means do, during fasting that maybe about uh, 12 to 18 hours after fasting our blood glucose level goes down because first of all our body uh, have the glucose from glycolysis that's the first part and <clears throat> next then we have uh, we can have glucose from this gluconeogenesis so this is the purpose that uh, during feeding the extra glucose is stored in the liver as glycogen but it's only sufficient for as you can see here only for 12 to 18 hours this you have to remember so what happens after 18 hours our body needs glucose and that's where the gluconeogenesis comes in All right now <clears throat> inside where does gluconeogenesis happen it happens mostly in the liver as you can see here and only during prolonged starvation it can take place in kidneys as you can see here but of course that will not be sufficient for the body only and only the liver can supply the glucose for the whole body all right <clears throat> okay so now what is gluconeogenesis so a very very simple way to understand gluconeogenesis is it's a reversal of glycolysis all right you know glycolysis when the glucose molecule breaks down to pyruvate and in gluconeogenesis what happens is this is a reversal so to say from pyruvate all the way back to glucose that is it is just like a reverse from the pyruvate to glucose well is it just a, rever a reversal is it that simple well there are some problems in reversing the reason is because there are certain enzymes which are uh, not just like you cannot just like reverse them so uh, these are called the irreversible um, enzymes and this is the irreversible points which uh, we have to emphasize in gluconeogenesis. that's all otherwise it's all about the uh, glycolysis, the reversal of glycolysis. This, as you can see, this is glycolysis. When we start from here, from the glucose, and we end up all the way down, we end up all the way down to pyruvate. So if we want to come back, we have to go back like this, from the pyruvate to, you can say, the phosphonyl pyruvate, and then all the way up, as you can see here, up to the glucose. But the first reaction, this is the one. <coughs> there are certain points in, glu in the gluconeogenesis which are irreversible. 
This is the first point as you can see here, right here, from pyruvate to phosphonoid pyruvate. And this is the reaction which uh, is very much emphasized because this is very difficult to reverse. So this is number one point. And <clears throat> now from all the way up from phosphonoid pyruvate, you can just reverse all these reactions. All these reactions up till here, fructose 1, 6, bisphosphate. This is the second reaction which is irreversible. So what, what you have to do, you have to also learn here that how to circumvent this reaction which is done by uh, PFK1 of course, the fructophosphokinase, which uh, by which the fructose phosphate is converted to fructose 1, 6, bisphosphate. So this is the second point we have to study, how we reverse this reaction. The third reaction is this one in which the glucose 6 phosphate is converted to glucose. That is, this is the last point in which actually the free glucose is thrown out from the cell into the general circulation. So these are the three points we have to study. First one is this one from pyruvate to phosphonide pyruvate. Second one is this one from fructose 1 6 bis phosphate to fructose 6 phosphate. And third one is from glucose 6 phosphate to the free glucose. These three points, if you understand, then that means you understood the whole uh, gluconeogenesis. So this is the first one I have written here for you. This is the first reaction which you have to study the from phosphonyl pyruvate to pyruvate. The second one is the, these are all the irreversible one from the fructose 6 phosphate to fructose 1, 6 bisphosphate, this is again irreversible, you have to come back somehow, this also you have to come back somehow, and also this one, because this is also irreversible, so you have to come back somehow. So <clears throat> in the next slide we will see that this is the most important reaction, the first one as we have seen, that is from the pyruvate to phosphonyl pyruvate. So how <clears throat> this is done, this is very simple uh, review I have given. This is the phosphonyl pyruvate and this is the pyruvate. And you have to come back from pyruvate to phosphonyl pyruvate. Problem here is that you cannot go back directly because this is an irreversible reaction. So what you have to do, you have to circumvent. And this is very simply shown here. This is cytoplasm, this is mitochondria. First of all, the pyruvate enters the mitochondria. And this is an enzyme which is the pyruvate carboxylase. And through this enzyme, it is converted first of all to oxaloacetate, as you can see here. And then this is converted to malate. And malate is a shuttle actually. So as you can see, the malate can come out into the cytoplasm again. And then it is converted back to phosphonyl pyruvate. So as you can see here, just uh, for coming back from here to here, we have taken a long course from here to here back. That's the thing you have to understand. The pyruvate first of all comes here and uh, converts into oxaloacetate. Why? Because pyruvate carboxylase is not present in the cytoplasm. Therefore, he comes inside and converted to oxaloacetate, then converted to malate. Again, the malate comes out. And this is another very, very important enzyme, which is called the phosphonyl pyruvate carboxykinase, also called the PEPCK. This is an enzyme which, is in, uh, which can be increased by glucagon and epinephrine actually the glucagon mostly and uh, when this is increased the conversion from malate to phosphonyl pyruvate is increased and that's how the glucagon 